Welcome back to the course on artisanal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about the application of audio analysis in the description of sounds. In the last lecture we talked about audio features, presenting various spectral-based analysis methods with which uh, we can obtain features of a sound that might be relevant for describing it. Now in this lecture we want to go beyond the idea of describing single sounds and introduce the concept of describing collections of sounds. So we'll first present the idea of the music information plane, and then we will distinguish between sounds and music with the aim of developing methodologies that are either uh, relevant to the more generic concept of sound or uh, more specific for uh, the, the characteristics of, of music. So we'll first uh, talk about sounds and sound recordings and then collections of sound recordings. And then we'll continue with the idea of music recordings and collections of music recordings. So this is uh, the music information plane that uh, should help us understand what do we mean by music description in our particular context. We consider uh, different abstraction levels, and the uh, left uh, column are these uh, different abstraction levels, and we can go from the physical level, uh, which is uh, basically the, the lowest level that uh, we are dealing with, and we go up uh, to the cognitive level. Okay, so that would be the highest level that we consider, and uh, some steps in between. So at the physical level, uh, when we talk about uh, sounds and music, we can uh, talk about uh, concepts like uh, the frequency or the duration of the sound or the spectrum and some uh, clear characteristics of the spectrum like the centroid and uh, also we can talk about intensity of the sound. If we go a uh, level higher, uh, the sensorial level, then uh, inside of frequency we uh, can talk about the pitch of the sound and then in terms of duration, we can talk about time, so the, the, the sensorial time of the duration. And then instead of talking about spectrum, uh, we can talk about timbre, which is a sensorial concept. And finally, in terms uh, of uh, intensity, uh, now we talk about loudness, which again is a sensorial concept. And we can go uh, a level uh, higher and talk about perceptual uh, topics or perceptual concepts that are more musical, that are, relate, uh, to, are related to uh, musical concepts. So in here we talk about successive and simultaneous intervals of uh, pitches, uh, what will be uh, called notes, and then in the, uh, when we talk about time, we talk about the structuring of time, and we talk about things like the, the beat, and then the timbre, uh, we talk about aspects of the timbre that uh, we can identify and characterize with uh, some aspect of uh, a musical sound, and for example the spectral envelope would be that. And then uh, finally, uh, instead of loudness, when we talk about uh, musical uh, loudness, we normally refer to dynamics, and we have a vocabulary that uh, talks about the dynamics of uh, musical sounds. And we can still go a level higher and uh, go towards the more uh, formalized way of talking about uh, musical uh, concepts. And uh, therefore, when we talk about pitch-related concepts, uh, we talk about uh, things like melody or key or tonality. Uh, when we talk about timing-related uh, uh, concepts, we talk about rhythmic patterns, uh, we talk about tempo, we talk about meter. And uh, when we talk about uh, spectral timbre characteristics, uh, we identify musical instruments or the voice as entities that have a characteristic timbre. And then finally, when we talk about dynamics or uh, loudness, uh, we are interested in the articulations of the sounds and how sounds uh, change from one to another. And finally, we uh, can reach the highest level, the cognitive level, the, the level that uh, relates to uh, as humans in a very subjective way and how we uh, listen to music and uh, 
what uh, what issues are relevant for us uh, in the interaction with uh, music. So at this level, the, the columns are not anymore uh, valid. There is interaction between all these different concepts. And uh, then we can talk about the emotion or the musical style or uh, semantic concepts that clearly integrate all these uh, other levels of descriptions to obtain these concepts, these uh, ways of describing music that are clearly more generic and definitely are uh, subjective or cultural. And uh, that would be a level that uh, definitely would be hard to reach. And, uh, uh, this, in this class, we are definitely not going to uh, talk much about that. So we will focus on uh, the low-level uh, descriptions of, of sounds, uh, hopefully reaching uh, a high enough level of uh, description that is of relevance uh, to uh, user applications. If we want uh, to describe sounds in a, in a generic way, uh, sounds like the ones we find in free sound. We can group audio features, uh, the audio features that uh, we talked about uh, in the last lecture, and we can group them in uh, different categories. So we can uh, talk about the timbre related features, and uh, we mentioned quite a few of them, uh, like the spectral centroid or MFCCs or the high frequency content, etc. Then uh, we can talk about another group of uh, features that uh, relate with dynamics, and that's basically the loudness and the level of a particular recording. Uh, and then we can uh, talk about the pitch-related features, and here is where uh, we can talk about the pitch or the pitch uh, salience. And finally, uh, we have to describe also the time-varying aspects of it. Uh, aspects of a sound that uh, relate to uh, the evolution of the sound, to the texture of the sound. And these, uh, we can group them uh, under the term morphological features. And uh, here we can talk about uh, things like the envelope of a sound, or the onset rate, or uh, many other uh, type of uh, descriptions that uh, we could include under this. We already have uh, seen uh, quite a few of these uh, descriptors. Uh, so what is interesting now is from these uh, descriptors, from these uh, features that we can analyze, uh, we can uh, now talk about collections of sounds. So let's talk about uh, how to describe uh, collections of sounds. And clearly there are many ways that we can analyze uh, a collection of sounds and, and describe it. And uh, we'll focus on three basic concepts. The first one, and uh, the most important concept that we need to develop, is the idea of similarity. If we want to talk about a collection of sounds, we have to talk about the, the similarity between the sounds, so we can form the idea of collections and group them. Once we can uh, talk about similarity, then we can cluster sounds, we can group sounds according to some criteria. And finally, uh, if we know some classes, some existing uh, labels that we use to describe a particular group of sounds, then we can classify sounds. We can assign classes to uh, particular sounds. In our context, uh, sound collection can be represented by a, diagra a diagram like this one. We consider a sound as a set of audio features, each feature having a numerical value. In order to properly describe a sound, we have to use uh, many features, but uh, for simplicity, uh, we will uh, be uh, taking only, in this case, uh, two features. So if we consider uh, a sound as uh, represented by two features, we can uh, display a sound as a point in a two-dimensional space. And that's uh, what we're seeing here. Every uh, feature is one dimension. So here we are showing two audio features. The horizontal line is the mean of the spectral centroid. So we have analyzed uh, notes of three instruments, of violin, flute, and trumpet. We have computed the spectral centroid, and we have taken the mean of it. So this is a multi-frame uh, feature. And also we have done uh, the mean of one of the, of the MFCC coefficients, the second coefficient. So that's the mean of the second uh, coefficient in the vertical line. And we can see that the violin has a quite high value for this uh, coefficient, for the 
the MFCC value. And it has a centroid that it's quite covers quite a bit of space. The trumpet uh, has uh, this MFCC coefficient quite lower, so it, uh, the, these blue dots are more in the lower side. And the flute sound is kind of an in-between, and also the, uh, the MFCCs uh, are in-between, uh, so that uh, we can kind of see that these uh, types of sound are distinct according to uh, these uh, two features. Now, in order to uh, play around with this space, uh, the most fundamental thing is to measure the distance between sounds, between points. So we have to find a way to, uh, in a multidimensional space, not just in a, this simple 2D space, how we uh, compared uh, two sounds, how do we find the similarity between uh, the two. So Euclidean distance is uh, one of the simplest ways to measure the distance between uh, two points in a multidimensional space. So in this case, P would correspond to uh, one sound, uh, the collection of features of one sound, and Q would correspond to another sound, the collection of feature values of the other sound. And then for every dimension, I, we just take the distance between uh, those two values at that particular uh, feature, uh, then we square it and we sum over all uh, the, the features, uh, all the dimensions, and then we take uh, the square root. And that's uh, the Euclidean distance. In the case of a 2D uh, space of just two features, uh, that becomes much simpler. So in this case, the red and the blue are uh, two uh, sounds with two features and we can just measure this Euclidean distance and it's basically the line that uh, that separates these uh, two points, the length of uh, this line. Now that uh, we know how to measure distance, uh, we can cluster sounds. K-means is a clustering algorithm and if we give to the algorithm the desired uh, number of clusters, it will create uh, the clusters and it will return the mean value of each of these clusters. K-means uh, clustering aims to partition n observations, uh, so the observations would correspond to the uh, number of sounds, into k clusters, so into, into k uh, categories or groups of sounds. And each observation uh, belongs to the cluster uh, that has the nearest mean. Okay? So this mean serves as the prototype of the, of the cluster that uh, we are, are creating. The problem of uh, finding uh, these, uh, these means or this clustering uh, is computationally difficult. It's uh, what is called NP-hard. However, uh, there are efficient heuristic algorithms uh, that are commonly employed and that converge quickly to a local uh, optimum. So this equation expresses this uh, minimization uh, process that uh, we have to go through in the k-means uh, algorithm. So the goal is to find the mu uh, for every cluster, so we have this k-cluster, that minimizes uh, this uh, overall sum. So we have to do it uh, sort of uh, holistically of uh, obtaining this uh, overall minimization uh, result. So in here in the in the plot we th we see like the three steps in uh, in this process of obtaining these clusters. On the left one we start from uh, a collection of points. In fact, this is not uh, sound features. This is just uh, random points in uh, space, and uh, the goal is to cluster uh, them according to. Two, uh, two classes, so we want to find two clusters. Okay? So we initialize the algorithm uh, by putting uh, two points uh, that will be used as the initial means of two clusters. So the middle uh, diagram, the red and the blue are the two initial um, means. And with do these two initial means, uh, the, this uh, collection of, uh, of samples, of, uh, of sounds, get clustered in the way that we see here, with the red cluster and the, the cyan uh, cluster. 
And now with k-means we iterate over uh, this uh, minimization that, uh, this equation that uh, we have here, and after a certain iteration it converges, and it converges to the um, clustering that we have on the right. So it has clustered the red dots in the lower left corner and the cyan dots in the upper right corner. And clearly this is a much better clustering than the initial random clustering that, uh, the, that the algorithm started with. Okay, so now with that we can uh, have collections of sounds and automatically find classes that uh, group uh, sounds that might have uh, similar audio features. Okay, uh, the, the last thing that uh, we talked about of, for describing uh, sound collections is the classification of sounds. And that means that uh, we know some classes, uh, we have identified certain categories of sounds, and what we want to do is, given a new sound, uh, we want to classify to one of these known uh, classes. So the K nearest uh, neighbor uh, uh, classifier, K and N, is an algorithm uh, used for this type of, uh, of classification. And uh, the, the, the rule of, uh, that we implement with K and N, it classifies a sound by assigning to it the class that is most frequent uh, in the neighbors. So uh, we find k neighbors and whatever is the majority vote of those uh, neighbors uh, then becomes the class of this query or of this uh, new sound. So this block diagram uh, exemplifies this, uh, this process, this set of rules that are uh, implemented in the KNN algorithms. So we start from a query, okay, so that would correspond to a new sound and we are starting with target examples. So we are starting with a collection of samples of sounds that have a label. So for example in the diagram below we have two uh, such uh, collections, uh, label collections, the blue and the red ones, and the cyan uh, dots are our query. Okay? So we have to uh, label or, or, or assign these query samples to one of these two uh, collections. So what we do is we measure the distance with the Euclidean distance. We measure from every query sample to the K, uh, to all the neighbors, okay, and we take the k top results. So we only look at the k nearest neighbors, and from those, uh, what we do is we take a majority vote based on the classes they belong to. Okay, so the last uh, uh, box is basically uh, we know the, the classes that the neighbors belong to and uh, we take the majority of uh, the vote and we assign the class that is the majority. So on the right diagram we see the result. So the, the cyan uh, dots have been assigned a color. So some have been assigned the, the blue uh, class and uh, the rest have been assigned and the red class. Okay, so this is a, a very simple but quite efficient way uh, to classify uh, sounds or of course any other type of data into classes. If we now go to musical sounds, recordings of pieces of music, the features to be analyzed should be more specific and more related uh, to musically meaningful concepts. So let's start by defining some categories of features or uh, descriptors that are relevant uh, musically. So we can talk about timbre-related descriptors and things uh, that uh, we mentioned like uh, instrument characterization or instrumentation characterization or even the, the remixing of uh, musical recordings that uh, is also uh, an important feature of uh, music. Then another category would be related to melody and uh, harmony uh, and that includes uh, things like the phrase, the motif uh, or the tonic of a piece of music and even if we talk about uh, non-Western music traditions like Indian music tradition we talk about raga or like in the Turkish music tradition we talk about makam. So these are melodic concepts that can be described 
and that are important uh, to characterize a particular piece of music. Then we can talk about rhythm, and uh, then again we talk about patterns, uh, or we can talk about uh, tempo, or we can talk about uh, beat. And in the case of uh, many music traditions, the concept of metrical cycle is uh, an important way to think about uh, rhythm. And finally, another uh, way of describing uh, music is by describing the, the structure of a piece of music, defining the sections or the movements that uh, uh, a bigger uh, piece of music might have. These uh, descriptions uh, cannot be obtained by just performing audio analysis. We normally start from audio features, but then we have to develop models uh, from a combination of features that can capture the essence of each concept. And uh, clearly this is beyond the aim of this class. And this is uh, very much an, an open uh, research area, uh, very active, and that uh, hopefully uh, will be uh, evolving uh, through the years and we will be able to uh, eventually do uh, things uh, like this. And if we go to music collections, it's even harder. Uh, the description of music collections can be very complex if we want to do musically relevant tasks. This is a very active uh, research topic, uh, again. And this is what uh, is referred as music information retrieval, in, in which we want to automatically classify pieces of music and uh, and be able to uh, perform tasks such as recommending a piece of music or finding a piece of music that might be related uh, to another one. And uh, then the, the concepts that we talk about sounds uh, also apply, but they have to be adapted here. So similarity is a fundamental concept, but uh, then uh, we have to uh, divide or we can, uh, we can find different facets of the similarity and uh, we can talk about uh, rhythmic similarity, we can talk about similarity of the instrumentation, of uh, the melodic aspects or the harmonic aspects, structural similarity, and then of course we could combine them in order to find uh, similar songs. And uh, these types of similarity are clearly not the Euclidean distances. Uh, we have to develop uh, similarities that uh, are much more uh, sophisticated. And then uh, we can uh, uh, classify and, and cluster uh, these uh, pieces of music uh, according to different criteria. And uh, the classification, uh, for example, can be classified uh, according to genre or style or artist or the, the school that uh, uh, music tradition comes from. Again, uh, this is uh, much beyond what uh, we can uh, cover in this uh, class, but it's uh, fascinating uh, topic uh, that is a, a natural continuation of the kinds of things uh, we talked about. So given that uh, this is a very open uh, research problem, uh, the references come from research papers. And uh, typically a lot of this research uh, is labeled under what we call music information retrieval. So the Wikipedia entry for music information retrieval is a good starting point. Uh, and then for the more specific things uh, that we have talked about, uh, you can look at the specific entries for Euclidean distance or for the different uh, the clustering, the k-means uh, clustering you, has a good entry in Wikipedia or the concept of uh, classification based on k-nears uh, neighbors. Of course, these are just two uh, examples of different clustering and classification strategies. There is a lot of uh, different uh, um, strategies coming from uh, the field of machine learning that has uh, brought uh, many uh, new possibilities uh, to do these type of tasks. And uh, uh, that's all. Uh, so in this lecture we have opened the door into a huge uh, research field that aims at automatically describing and organizing a large collection of sounds and music uh, recordings. We just introduce uh, some of the basic concepts and specific method methodologies that can be used to start working on this topic. In the programming lectures, we will show a little bit uh, examples of how to actually uh, do some of, some of this, uh, but clearly we cannot make uh, justice to uh, this uh, field of research. However, I hope uh, you got uh, a taste of it. And I will see you uh, next class where we uh, will uh, present uh, some more uh, demonstrations and practical examples of all this. See you next time.
拜拜。